This is my battery pack from a 2013 Nissan LEAF. It has five screw holes. One, two, three, four, and five on each side. And those have 10 millimeter bolts, which look like this in them. It also has six 10 millimeter bolts here that hold this plate on. And unlike some of the earlier 2011-2012, there don't appear to be any security screws on this one. So I pried this thing up to get a good visual, and you can see inside that there is a good inch or so of metal going up. So it's perfectly safe to chisel all along this bottom to get rid of that gasket. Um, you're just going to hit the metal on the inside instead of any type of battery components. So the technique I use is to hammer this thing in straight all the way in until it hits the metal and then I move it down and do the next bit and down and do the next bit. After I've done that for a while I push it in this way, hammer it in at an angle and just run it all the way down the metal to clear up anything else. I've chiseled out the back and the closer side and you can see here that the cover is definitely starting to lift up but it looks like I'm gonna to have to do it a minimum one other side here. I'm hoping that three will be enough to allow me to peel the fourth side up without actually hitting it myself. We'll see how that works out. So this is the interior of a 2013 leaf battery. I have chiseled away the sealant on these three sides and then I just folded back the uh, top there because I don't really care about the top. I'm not going to keep it anything. Um, so now it's just a matter of safely disconnecting a whole bunch of power connections and unbolting a lot of things to get the individual modules out. So this is where I'm going to start putting on my uh, 500 volt gloves and using my insulated tools. You can see around the edge here, there's a good height on that lip. It's probably about an inch high. So you can safely air chisel all around in there and just chisel all of that away really quickly if you have an air chisel, which I kind of recommend after doing this myself manually. Now Nissan's done a pretty good job of covering most of the exposed electrical connections, but still I should mention I covered as much of my wrenches as I could with electrical tape. Just in case I drop them across some connections, it'll be less likely to spark something. Also, I'm going to be wearing my 500 volt gloves for this. So the first thing I'm planning on doing is removing this connector right here um, and take that big cable there out and then I'll probably work on the connector at the other end, and then I'll probably start working on some of these crossbars and bus bars here, probably that guy right there first, um, and removing as many electrical connectors as I can. So I just used the open-ended wrench to start this off, and then I was able to spin it off with my 500 volt gloves. Um, instead of trying to trace the wiring and figure what's connected and what's not, I'm just covering everything I take off with a liberal dosing of electrical tape, and I figure I'll figure it out once I, I really get the whole thing out. I really want to get these two interconnects out, the ones that have the 01 or 10 markings on them from the Nissan factory. Um, because those are connecting big portions of the pack, and if I can take those two interconnects out, um, the individual voltage of the sub-packs are going to be a lot smaller to work with. But there's this steel bar that goes right across one of them, and that guy goes right across the other one. So I'm trying to decide if I want to take that steel bar out first, or try to take off one of these interconnects first. And I guess it depends on how much flex the interconnects have on them, so I'm going to probably loosen the interconnect bolts and test the flex on them. So it turns out that there's plenty of room to take this interconnect here out from underneath that other interconnect without snaking anything around. Um, and I have to say I really like the posts on these bolts because the nut comes up, but because it's not threaded all the way up, the nut will not spin off the top. So you just keep spinning it until it rests on the top and then you can lift it off easily without risking the nut flying all over the place. Obviously having the 500 volt gloves makes it easier for me to reach down and unsnap things um, with slightly less fear, although you always want to pretend you're not really wearing them. Alright, so both of these bus bars you can snake out without really having to worry too much, so that's nice. These two sets of packs here and there and here and here are still attached on the bottom with a bar on the bottom, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get those out without getting that big steel piece out. So this bolt and that bolt over there are 16 millimeters, and they're put on pretty tight. You might want to hit them with an impact wrench, 
Um, incidentally, a 5.8 socket will fit a 16 millimeter bolt pretty well. These guys in the center right here are not 16. They are 13 millimeter and they have that bolt sticking up so you can't use a shallow socket. You need a pretty deep socket to get around those. So I was able to pull the steel bar out, no real problems. The only bolt that was a little bit tricky is this guy right here because it's kind of close to this connect that goes into the emergency service disconnect. I think there's basically no potential there against the voltage, but I wore my 500 volt gloves to get that nut off because it would kind of possibly touch the bottom of that. Also, I had to cut a retaining plastic strap on the black BMS wires there to get the thing out from underneath it. So I went ahead and disconnected all of the little tiny wires that I could. These include both things like this plug for the thermometer wire as well as these plugs here on the high voltage line, the plugs that are right here for the cabin heater connection, all of the BMS plugs there and in there and back up here as well as these two big guys right here which are connected to the center of each module in the front. Um, mostly I'm just working on the principle that having everything as electrically disconnected as possible is going to lower the voltage of each little sub pack. Alright, I went ahead and unbolted all of these long 10 millimeter threaded rod bolts here so I can take this top cover off and get access to the physical modules in this stack. I obviously still have to remove those connectors on the front first. So I removed the plates and bolts that hold this little sub-pack together. I also loosened the nuts that hold this little white thing down. It appears to be a conductive piece of tin or foil that is held slightly away from the pack, and I'm not sure if it's a ground plane or if it's a sensor, so if the pack is damaged, that will contact something and the BMS will know to shut everything down. I put my 500 volt gloves on, put the leather protective gloves on top, and basically just manhandled about 60 pounds to out of the battery where it's nice and easy to work on the top pieces so I can disassemble the whole top piece at my leisure. I have my first battery module completely free. So this is the battery module from a 2013 Leaf Pack. It's also known as the Lizard battery. And it looks a little different from some of the pictures I've seen online of earlier versions. So it has these little gaps here, I think, for air cooling. Um, the connectors are all copper, and so the bus bars are also over there are copper. And so it's a copper to copper connection. I'm not sure if the other ones have that or not. Um, there's a kind of a gap or a seam down the side here, I think, also to let air in. Um, and the bottom has a lot of openings in it as well. Um, so as you can see, this case, it looks like it's basically split into two halves. It might be that glue is the only thing holding it together. So it's going to definitely need to be compressed externally when you want to use these modules. So it's important to note that this little plastic thing here looks like it just has BMS wires in it, which fooled me initially. But it does have a copper bus bar connecting that side to this side over here. So, right, so this is a quarter of the pack. It's about 90 some volts. Um, one terminal is here, and the series connections goes through there, normally through a bus bar that I've taken out here, through here, all along through here, through there, up and around and up and around, down and around and back to this terminal here. So looking at these little plastic plates with the tin inside, I'm pretty sure there's some type of structural compromise sensor. So they're held away from the cells by these little pieces of foam, and it looks like if the pack gets crushed such that they touch the cells, they make electrical contact, and that signals to the BMS that the battery's been compromised structurally and it probably turns off the contactor, I don't know. I want to know how compressed to put these guys back when I compress them again. Looks like six modules is just a sixteenth under eight inches. So I'm planning on doing either packs of three or packs of six. Measuring the compressed state of 24 modules, looks like on the inside here it's 31 and 7 eighths. Measuring the compressed state of 24 modules along the outer corner, the outer corner goes all the way up to 32 inches, pretty even. So I put on my 500 volt gloves and removed the BMS unit. Um, these plugs, the four on the bottom, are pretty easy to remove with it in place. You just place a screwdriver in and push to push the tab in and you use another screwdriver to push the plug out. They remove quite easily. There's also these two in the black wires here 
that go on the side there and they remove quite easily as well. So keep in mind right now that some of these pins are connected to this side and that side of this pack here. So there's about 200 volts still within those pins there. Um, but luckily the pins are in the BMS unit and the holes are there so it's mostly protected. I am in the process of removing all of the bolts that hold this module into the pack. So there are eight 10 millimeter bolts along the back and another eight down there along the front. There's three 13 millimeter bolts here and another three 13 millimeter bolts on the other end here. All right, so this unit is heavy, but it's possible to lift at least a corner of it up and out by myself. So I think I'm just gonna try shifting it back and forth and get it onto my pad so I can lift it upright and get easy access to the top. So it's a bit of work and I definitely recommend a hoist if you have one, but it's certainly doable to lift a corner at a time and swivel this thing out onto a pad. This bottom bracing plate is held on by 12 10 millimeter bolts and then four more 10 millimeter nuts on the sides. These two cross brackets are on top of all of the bus bar connections and BMS wires, so I'm going to remove those. This looks like uh, five bolts on each. So I've decided to remove this bar right here, not only because these guys are hanging over the bus bars, but also because some of these catches are very close inside there, and um, it just makes things easier. All right, I have one cover removed, and what I'm doing is I'm removing basically every third bus bar, starting here and then go there and so forth. I'm only going to work with one cover at a time. Um, so what I'm planning on doing here is just removing the bolts and the sense screws um, everywhere, and then I'll slip a piece of insulation between this little bit and then move down to the next cover. I don't want to bother removing every single bus bar because that's an awful lot of work and I'm going to just put a snap them right back in when I'm done. Um, so I'm just removing every third one to keep them into basically one, two, three cells is about 24 volts, which is, you know, not super, super dangerous. So I've just removed all the bolts and the sense screws. Um, and what I have here is just a piece of coroplast and I've just slid it in there. Um, so basically all of these guys are not touching the metal now, and I'm going to move down to the next guard. I've taken the entire BMS and bus bar assembly off the top, so I have 24 cells ready to go there. My plan is just to put the bolts and the scent screws back in, run some electrical tape over the top, and just store the module like this until I'm ready to use it.